Hey everybody, I'm uh, taking a break from, well usually when I get time to, I'm uh, working on my comic, trying to get that thing done, but tonight I felt like doing something that's just drawing, just for the sake of drawing, it feels good to do that every now and then, so I'm starting off with an 11 by 17 at 600, just in case uh, I end up liking whatever it is that I draw here I mean usually I don't turn these into any kind of prints or anything like that but sometimes I like to give myself a, a large canvas here I'm drawing on a Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD and uh, uh, I mean if I was drawing at an actual size it would be somewhere around like that and if I draw any smaller than that say eight and a half by eleven which is roughly about here uh, it's gonna be really small because you guys are gonna see all this other stuff even though to me this is a perfect size area so I'm trying to make this a little large so you guys can see what I'm doing here but yeah um, my fist video is doing pretty good and I'm thinking that maybe people like that one because they want you know more info on how to draw hands and whatnot so I figure I'm just gonna mess around here and draw a hand video so yeah let me see here so basically what I'll do is I'll usually start with you know what how about I use the uh, the general shape of a hand that I that I almost always use so usually I start with this shape and the reason why it's not always this this uh, uh, curvy and dynamic I mean sometimes I'll, I'll round it out and do one of these same pr pretty much the same kind of principle that I used in the make how to make a fist video you know how to draw a fist and the reason that I do that is because if I take this shape, this can be the palm, it can be the the uh, back of the hand, or if I if I uh, rotate it, let's say, let's do a flip flop, bring this straight over, right? If I do one of these, again, I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't make that so, so angular then you can start to see how it how how I use it um, for positioning basically because you, you th start throwing in the knuckles it's a pretty easy shape to work from so what I'll do is let me move this up here if I'm drawing let's call this the left hand right let's left top of the hand right and we'll call this the right top. So if I choose to bring this down, basically turn it over, and I make it the palm, right? If you look at the, if you look at a hand straight forward, you'll see the thumb, right? Then you'll see the the index, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. And then underneath, back here, you'll have the main part of the palm, right? And then the the uh, the bottom part, or the outside. And you can basically see where I'm getting that shape from. So what I'll do is if I got a character that's... pointing their hand at you or let me see here what's a really weird one reaching up to grab something right or reaching up to grab something from somebody so let's say we got let's just say this is our arm right I don't know why I'm drawing that in bone structure but whatever so if this is our arm and this person has their thumb here and you got the rest of the 
of the fingers in a row, right? And you got the underside of the palm. You got the part of the palm where the thumb is located, right? And they're reaching out like that. Actually, let me just draw this as a blob. I should probably zoom in. So if they're reaching up for something weird, like say somebody's handing them a note, and they're trying to grab that thing. Let's make it a letter. Sorry, that was my keyboard slamming. If anybody's wearing headphones, that's going to suck. But, um, yeah, so say they're reaching up like this. If I take this weird little horseshoe hoof looking thing that I do, I should probably really name this. Um, you can see already, before I even start filling anything in, where I'm going with it, you know? All I have to do is draw a line out from each one of these fingers. I, I, I choose one choose one side or the other. So if you're going to use the underside, use the underside. If you're going to use the back hand or the back of the of the finger, which is what I do because it's just it's easier to keep control of, then you can see where your fingers are going to fall. And same thing with the point beyond that. So if you have that point coming out there, and then you want to drop those two off, right? Then what we would do is we go in and we flesh out the rest of the finger. And that'll bring you right back up underneath to the bottom side of that knuckle. And you can refine this in any way you want. So the point here is not to give you an exact beautiful hand. I mean, maybe one day I'll be some kind of virtuoso that can do that. But the point of this is to give you this tool where you can say, hey, you know what? I can draw that in any position, right? So even if you had these two going out and then you want to tuck these two in, You can see right there that you now have a better basis for a finger structure to work from than, you know, just guess working or, or maybe hunting down a photo. It's going to take you a lot longer. So of course we want to be able to have that kind of control in our art, right? So the whole point of it is if you can control the palm, right? then you'll have a better handle around making, you know, being comfortable with your hand shapes. So let's move that thing away. Off over here. So let me see if I can come up with another one here. Uh, how about somebody giving a peace sign? So you know what, I need to move all of these. Let me shrink these really quick. They already took up their portion of the video. I'm just gonna leave it there for reference. I should bring this up here too, actually. Whoops. There we go. Sure, why not? So, where were we? Okay, peace sign. So let's say we have somebody palm facing us. So let's call it that shape, right? Grab your oval.
give it one of those. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to end up getting rid of it anyways, right? This is an underdrawing. And then usually I'll throw in a, a, a wrist bone there and there. Is this accurate? No, not even, not even close. I mean, you got all these little other bones that are in here, right? And these two are actually much closer together and they sort of do one of these kind of things. So is drawing this accurate? No, but when you start connecting that flesh around that bone, it helps give you an idea of the little subtle things that you want to flesh out. So we're going to have our, our thumb bone here and we're going to have our index, middle, ring, and pinky, right? Of course we could draw all their little bones here, carpal bones, whatnot, but we don't need all that if we're trying to learn how to be able to be comfortable just drawing this palm in whatever position. So you can do that if you want to double check what you're doing. But then we know we have the middle part of the of the thumb and the end part. Sorry that I'm forgetting the names of these. So we know if we draw them straight out We're going to get that kind of thing. So say you're a person that's, you know, comfortable with, with drawing the hand in a straight position. You are like, man, I can draw this straight, right? But I just can't draw it in any other position. And that's pretty, uh, I mean, this is really sloppy, but I'm, I'm not keeping this. That's what I'm trying to make a point out here. So if you're like, oh, I can draw this hand straight and I can do this, that, blah, blah, but I can't make this thing make a peace sign. I can't, you know, make it flex in any other way, blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, if you can draw the hand straight, yeah, you pretty much already got it. Because from that point on, it's just merely a game of manipulation. N these bones don't stay all the time in the same straight line. So if you look at this hand from the side, right, let's draw a little, this is the pinky right here, and this whole time you were drawing this hand, you know, straight, and you're like, oh, I can draw all these hand, all these fingers, and blah, blah, you know, I'm cool with that, and there's the thumb and all that, whatnot, and blah, blah, blah. and then you don't think you can do anything else other than that. Well, we're, I mean, these can only either flex one way or the other, right? Like literally that's it. You can put the pinky forward like this. Let's go off this back of the pinky. And then you can have all of the other fingers going back with the knuckles like this, right? Here, let me let me change color. Maybe I can. How's that? Yeah, that's good. So let's call all of these right here the the black lines. That's pinky in the back with a leading index finger, right? So now let's put the pinky in the front and let's lead up. I mean, we're going off the same basis right here, right? But this time we're leaning this way. Instead of showing more of the palm, we're showing more of the backhand. So then you have the knuckle. And let's call this the ring finger right there. And you can see a little bit less of the other knuckle. And let's call this the, the middle finger. And then the index finger, right? You can put those however you want. There's like, there's got to be millions of photos of hands. 
I just want to show control. So you can see with the palm a little bit more angle, angled towards the palm, we have all of our fingers with the pinky back here, right? Then the ring, then the middle finger, and then the index finger. That's on this side. And then with the blue, you have the fingers going that way. Like that. And then with the black, we have the fingers going out this way. So really, this distance, I mean, if you look at your hand from, from the thumb area straight down, and then flex, try to flex one in front of the other, you're not going to go very much distance. I mean, in, real, in all reality, at most, you've probably got roughly half an inch, three quarters of an inch of flex. So every time I've seen somebody that, you know, they're afraid of, oh, I can't draw the fingers or I make the gap in between too big or this or that, as long as you get the rough estimate of this down where you know where your thumbs at you know where your index is at if you can get that rough spacing I drew that one a little bit messed up right there like that down where your knuckles are typically pretty much lined up with the you know into the wrist bones where they're supposed to go obviously um, then that's about it. I mean, other than that, you're just rotating it around and then you start placing your index finger and your middle finger and your ring and pinky. And you just go from there. So let's bring this back to being the palm again, right? I mean, look at this. We could just as easily make this the back of the hand and make it a knuckle. So let's take it back to the peace sign thing. All we have to do is we say where we want to put our, our middle knuckles. And then these two, we want these to fold in, right? So we're going to bring those in. We're going to bring that in. And we can we can draw ovals there too if you want. I mean, usually that's pretty much how I shortcut it. I'll, I'll use an oval. And we know when we get to this knuckle, we're not just only going to see the underside, right? Because that in, that means cylinder-wise, we're looking at the top, and this is the bottom. But that's not what we're doing here you're pretty much going to be at the edge of a cylinder and another edge of a cylinder like that so you're going to be able to see a little bit of this going down into here and all of these fingers usually once they start folding like this for instance if we bring this over let's drop this guy down you're going to start seeing this uh, this kind of a shape right here. So you're going to have one joint, two joint, three joint. No matter how, how you count it, you can count it by the joint or you can count it by the segment. So you got one, two, three. That's it. So when you fold the finger in, you got this joint, one, two, where you're at, and then three down back in there, right? One, two, and three. So you're only either you're only going to be able to see so much of it from certain angles. So from this one, we're primarily going to see one and two. Right there, that's it. So then, what looks weird about this if we're doing this finger? If they, this person is making a peace sign, right? What looks weird about it so far is that thumb is out. I mean, other than me drawing these, these uh, very short-cutted fingers. <laughs> so, if you're able to get get to this point, you're like, yeah, but what am I going to do about this now, right? Because I'm only used to drawing the thumb straight out. Same thing. Swivel that baby in. Swivel it in. And this portion of the thumb 
usually covers when when the hand is in a fist <clears throat> like I showed on my other video it usually covers the distance of these two when they're folded because they're gonna come in and they're gonna go into a V when when they're folded like a fist so if we just keep that in mind and we bring this thumb over like I'm saying here then you're gonna have this kind of effect going on which means the thumb is going to catch the last part of that finger if you have a very flexible thumb my, my thumb can go all the way to pinky I'm not really sure how that will look on here because I don't know if everybody can do that I knew two people that I used to work with and uh, they couldn't count to two like this they had to hold these fingers down and count starting one here and this would be two and then they would bring this one up three and then they would release the thumb and that would be their four they couldn't count <laughs> one two three and four and hold these with their pinky at, for last it, it was I don't know it was it was weird to me but yeah, you can see even though this is a really rough, uh, almost pile of garbage looking thing, the idea here is to exercise control. I mean, you can see how I could just remove this, I could just drop these two fingers down in here. If I wanted to, make it a little bit more dynamic like I did in the other video, this would be shaded, and this would be shaded, and then I would just fold that back, paying attention to the folds of the skin, obviously, of course and then I would shade that in I'd shade this in coming out of the palm and then boom you'd have a fist in there and take it one further if we wanted to get rid of all of that stuff right do one of those now boom just like that you have the back of the fist giving you a backwards peace sign just paying attention to the folds of the skin so it's really not I don't know I, I me I, I've worked on hands so much because I used to be so terrible at them that a sloppy draw, hand drawing like this I've, I've actually had uh, fellow classmates in school that were just I don't know exactly what you would call it flabbergasted I, I guess at the fact that you know you can move a hand around like this and just have total control and to me the principles of it I, I guess maybe because I used to be so bad at it and I just practiced like crazy to be able to control where the hand is what it's doing how it's picking things up I, I like drawing stylized hands so I apologize if anybody is looking for, you know, totally photorealistic looking hands. I don't really dig that. I mean, that's not really my thing. I like knowing the principles so that if I choose to do this in a very cartoony manner, you know, like if this was a very rounded, cartoony looking hand. You know, would I be able to do the same kind of thing? Yes. You know, I like being able to have those principles down more than just, you know, drawing something in photorealistic style. And if you've watched any of the other videos I've done, you know why. It just, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't pique my interest as much as something that I can control and change and manipulate and this is just a rough sketch so once it gets to this point you know then you can really go in here and and if you wanted to you can make a new layer you could drop this rough one down and then you could grab a nice G pen over here maybe thicken the line a little bit yeah there we go see then from that basis you can go in here and make something nice
I'm just doing this for kicks. And then all of a sudden, who's given the peace sign, right? Oh yeah, the Dark Nine. Yeah. I'm just doing that to show, you know, that it's not really as hard as a lot of people might think it is. So, yeah, I hope this helps anybody that struggles with hands and, uh, uh, if it uh, piques your interest, you know, go, go ahead and give me a subscribe. Um, hit like or dislike on the video and then uh, um, let me know in the comments if you, if you would like to see any other kind of positions of hands. Maybe there's something I'm missing here. Uh, maybe I'm taking something for granted. And maybe I could go into a lot more detail that could help somebody. You know, when I get a lot of views on one certain video, uh, it, it's nice, of course, but um, it's more important to me that this be more of like a relevant um, learning learning point as far as whatever I'm talking about or whatever the heck it is that I'm doing. You know, is it going to help anybody or am I just blabbing? And... Uh, some of the videos I've got, they've got a lot of views and nobody leaves any comments. And, uh, you know, there's some to do, of course, you know, and I thank those people and whatnot. But I try to get to them all and make sure that people um, get to see more of something that they're actually engaged in. So, in other words, if if I'm getting a, a several cl uh, clicks on a certain video and it's not very long, uh, or I should say they're not viewing it for very long, it's usually a pretty safe bet for me to think that people aren't really getting too much out of that video. So I'll move on to another topic. And I'll go keep trying to find something that people are getting a lot of views out of, or I should say a lot of view time. You know, because if you click on a video and you watch for one or two seconds, that's nowhere near as relevant. Because I can see the statistics of it as somebody that will watch something for, you know, the entirety of the video to find out exactly how to do whatever the heck it is that I'm showing. So yeah, just uh, let me know. And thank you for watching.